डालस क्या हाल है क्या हाल है क्या हाल है मैं हूँ आपका दोस्त आपका साथी डी जे मूडी मूडी अख्तर ऑन फर्नीचर वीडियो वन ओ फोर पॉइंट नाइन एफ एम ऑन अ लीडर्स जर्नी वेर वी ब्रिंग यू लीडर्स अक्रॉस द ग्लोब जहाँ जिनसे हम आप सब बहुत कुछ सीख सकते हैं जितने लोगों ने हमें ट्यून इन किया है आपका बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया टुडे आई एम ऑनर्ड एंड प्रिवलेज टू हैव मिस्टर आबिद अली नीमच वाला एट द स्टूडियोज ऑफ फन एशिया रेडियो को फाउंडर डेलस वेंचर कैपिटल चेयरमैन एंड सी ई ओ कॉम्पैस डिजिटल एक्विजिशन कॉर्प वेलकम मिस्टर आबिद अली नीमच वाला आबिद नीमच वाला वॉज द सी ई ऑफ विप्रो वन ऑफ द लार्जेस्ट ग्लोबल आई टी सर्विसेज फर्म इन दर्ल्ड फ्रॉम ट्वेंटी सिक्सटीन टू ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी प्रायर टू विप्रो आबिद बिल्ड एंड मैनेज टाटा कंसल्टेंट सर्विसेज बिजनेस प्रोसेस आउटसोर्सिंग businesses among other leadership roles held abid served on the board of directors of vert usa corporation and is a co-founder and director of dallas venture capital a capital fund that has a presence in the us and india once again mr abid ali abid bhai welcome to the studios of fun asia i'm so fortunate and happy to have you here thank you thank you for having me on the show Uh, Abid Bhai, very very impressive background. I don't know where to start, but I'll start telling you why this show, why Leaders Journey. We have our South Asian and in general mass population listening to Financial Radio, and they all thrive to grow. We all come to this lovely nation with lots of opportunities, and we do our best, work hard to be. at some level where we feel happy about what we have accomplished and seeing your background it is so impressive we'll go there mujhe sabse pehle aapse puchna hai aap kaha paida hue kaha bade hue what was your childhood like abid bhai so i was born in bombay in india and i still call it bombay uh, which is mumbai now and uh, i went to school over there and uh, growing up in south bombay was fun at that time uh, this is uh, late 60s early 70s when things were not as crowded and it i still today my favorite city is bombay wow and i'm sure so bombay so any childhood memories any stories growing up in oh, mumbai many many of them but uh, some of the most uh, uh, kind of um, uh, fond memories are uh, going and watching shole uh, wow. and you know all of the movies in south bombay in the movie theaters I I remember I had after Shole and Diwar both of them were released I'm a big Amitabh Bachchan fan and uh, I watched Shole seven times uh, both out of school college kind of going and uh, sneaking in and then uh, Diwar as well So Shole se you know mujhe kya yaad aaya ke cassette tapes mein bhi you would have the whole movie so I we were in Chittagong at that time right. we came to Uh, Calcutta and watch Shole by the way, right. and went back with a cassette and we had memorized the whole movie. Absolutely. <laughs> so, so going back uh, to what sparked technology in you, and when? Okay, so that if you ask my parents, especially my mom, she will say that you know, बचपन से ही he used to open up things. Uh, if you know, I remember opening up the radio. We had bought a new TV. TVs were very new at that time. and i think there was some problem in tuning the tv and i just tried to fix it so i was always very attracted to technology and especially electronics in which uh, then i did engineering in electronics and communication um and then uh, i was very fond of math as well only later i realized that you know math and uh, a knack for technology is very important uh, so i ended up doing what uh, i was passionate about fond of and it became a business and profession for me as well it became pretty big business and profession so from math to technology which college how did the transition happen there all right so then um, i kind of uh, chose uh, uh, physics chemistry and math as my majors in I high school i still remember that <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then of course you know engineering was the path so i went to nit raipur where i did uh, electronics and communications engineering and then i went to iit bombay so i came back to bombay and uh, uh in in a, both the colleges actually more than just the education which of course you get great education in india is uh, we are very blessed that india has some of the best educational institutions some of the best um, 
uh, infrastructure to be able to get uh, technology education or in general um, education. Uh, but after that, uh, you know, the, the IT industry was just a budding industry and then I got a chance to kind of uh, move from IIT Bombay into data consultancy services, which sealed the deal for me in being te in technology for life. Data consulting services. So what was your first title as a, a joinee? Um, I just uh, joined straight out of college. So I was a uh, uh, assistant system engineer trainee. Assistant systems engineer trainee. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Uh, and it's a very interesting story because at uh, uh, IIT Bombay, everybody at, in those days wanted to work for American companies even today. And uh, I had never given an interview. So there was an American bank which was supposed to come for campus interview. And because I'd never given an interview, I went to the thesis interview, which was a day before, to practice interviewing skills. Uh, but, uh, you know, in those days, the word startup was not very famous, but TCS was a startup. And uh, the person uh, who took my interview was able to paint a whole picture of creating a tech. India was not even known for technology or IT in those days. This is 92. Uh, and the company was very small. Everybody knew everybody else. Today it's a 400, 500,000 people company. Um, I just love the vision that, you know, India had lost out in the manufacturing race to China. And the person, uh, Dr. Jain, uh, who interviewed me talked about how India can become the talent and technology capital of the world. And saying that way back in early 90s was a very lofty objective. Of course, today, being an Indian, you know, uh, it's taken for granted that you have to be something to do with IT. Well, once again, uh, Dallas, if you're just tuning in, we are talking to Mr. Abid Ali Neemachwala at the studios of Panesha Radio on a leader's journey produced by Vishali Thakkar. I'm Moody Akhtar. Once again, having a blast listening to you, Abid Bhai. So going back to the trainee and, and all the middle level leadership to a CEO of Wipro, right? How would you, how would you in few minutes tell our listeners how that journey happens? Because I know personally folks who say, you know what, I'm a level four. I want to be level five. I didn't get promotion. How do I become senior director, manager, VP? What is your takeaway and advice to all our tech guys listening to you? So first of all, I will say that, uh, you know, uh, you have to work hard. There is no alternative to hard work, smart work, uh, do well what you do, deliver the results that are expected of you. But there is also an element of uh, being lucky as well. And one of the things that I personally, you know, uh, most people do most things right. But one of the things that I always tell young people is take risk, do things that everybody else is not doing. And I, I kind of, through my journey, if, if I were to point out one thing that worked very well for me is to do things that others were not doing. So I'll just give you a couple of examples for that. One is very early in my career, uh, you know, anybody my age, 25, 27 at that time, the objective was to join an IT company and then come to in United States on an H1 visa. Oh, right? of course. And then uh, we have uh, thousands of people doing that and then... I was offered to go in 94 when Nelson Mandela was just chosen as the president over there and apartheid got over. Tata Group wanted to enter uh, South Africa to do business because before that uh, India did not do any business with South Africa. And I was called and asked and I think many more people before me were called and asked whether if you would like to take this assignment. And uh, luckily for me, a lot of people before me were wiser and said no. I was like a young lad saying, what the heck, let's go ahead and do it. And I ended up becoming the first employee of Taras to go to South Africa and do a project over there for a medical institution. Wow. And the first uh, one. First one. And that kind of helped me because, you know, when I said yes and came back, my friends, uh, you know, we were living together as um, a, a few people and they all said, are you crazy? Why did you say yes? You won't get a chance to go to the US now. You get stuck in South Africa. But what it did is it made me visible amongst, you know, a few hundred people, it made me as an individual visible to the CEO of the company then, you know, the founder of the Indian uh, IT industry, Fakir Chand Kohli, he started recognizing me because I had gone there. When I came back, he wanted to understand how the country is, how business is done over there. And that risk-taking ability, treading a path, which not everybody thinks is the right path or the most treaded path, the normal path to do, makes a difference. Similarly, you know, I, I was enjoying doing programming, I was project manager, and then I wanted to 
move into sales wow and, and what a jump <laughs> what a shift and i kept uh, pestering my bosses that look you know i've done all of this enough i help with sales i want to be sales and one day i get a call and i'm told look there is a sales position open in japan can you go and i said yes what without thinking i said yes uh, because for i heard sales i did not hear japan <laughs> only later when when i met all the professional sales people they would look at me and chuckle and i said what is the issue they said japan is the most difficult place to sell anything forget services uh, but i enjoyed uh, going there i learned sales there i learned building relationships and again something that not everybody would do so one of the things i always advise people is do hard work uh, you know you have to do what is required of you but always try and take risk always try and do something different because after all growth is nothing about but being able to do something which is different and that is why you stand out and every time you stand out you get an opportunity to then go to the next level and companies are very good at rewarding people who do something out of the ordinary for the company companies pay back so that's how uh, i kind of see my journey all the way up to you know i can tell you many many stories but all the way up to uh, becoming a ceo i think that one quality stood out very well for me so take risk out of the box thinking and just go for the things that are not normal that are challenging so you just casually said ceo <laughs> it's a very big big word for repro 40 billion dollar uh, portfolio how so that's a, again a very interesting story you know uh, about midway through my journey at tcs uh, i got the opportunity to do a very big uh, acquisition for the company we acquired citibank's uh, back office operations in india just around the global financial crisis and i built the bpo business as you talked about in my profile and uh, after that i had done that uh, you know so i was uh, enjoying it but i had built it it was about 6 years from 250 million dollars in revenue about 1.8 billion dollars in revenue and i said what next so i said let me jump into venture capital because that was again the ability to bring build new businesses and then uh, as i was thinking of doing that and i it got announced that i was uh, leaving tcs uh, i got this opportunity uh, and an offer from uh, mr prem ji and you never say no to opportunities of running a public company coming specially from uh, somebody as legendary as uh, azim prem ji and i i picked that up and you know it was a fantastic journey again because uh, wipro is a great company and you get to lead that company lead it into its digital future uh, and uh, being a ceo uh, being in the public markets is a great experience for a leader to have which i thoroughly enjoyed and more importantly working with legendary leaders like prem ji uh, teaches you so much so being at that high level and going from the ground where you were a trainee you have seen it all in between so A lot of listeners, a lot of technology folks listening to you, as I said, are craving to grow in the leadership role, in the executive roles, in the corporate ladder, and they have to deal with the bureaucracy and politics. And not everybody gets lucky every day. So, what is your humble advice to everybody who wants to be you? I think there are three or four things that I would uh, give as my own learnings and experiences, and then people can pick what uh, they think is advice in that. Number one. do well what you are currently doing sometimes i see very bright smart people thinking so much about what they want to do next that they screw up what they are doing right Love now love it that is number 1 number 2 i always believe in servant leadership so you have to be a popular leader amongst your teams amongst your peers one of the things i have realized is growth is not only about what you do to grow but what others feel Uh, that should make you grow because people don't realize some very smart people get stunted in their growth because there is like half of the company praying that this guy doesn't grow and they're complaining and they're talking about that guy or you know stuff like that and that has an impact irrespective of your performance because leaders are chosen for both performance and a value system and behavior and culture and sometimes smart people do very well on the performance axis but they don't do as well so your colleagues your friends even your competitors would want you to grow your customers so i think that is the second thing that uh, you know humble leadership enables you servant leadership enables you to do that and the third is you know the military or the sports teach that very well is you can be a general you can be a uh, sitting in the headquarters you could be a leader but don't lose touch of the ground when 
your employee on the ground is able to see that my boss understands what I do. It motivates the employee much more. And you know, you as a leader can't be successful if your teams are not making you successful. If every day they are not giving their 150% and being able to connect the team by communicating to them, by telling them that you understand what they do on the ground every day by helping them, taking roadblocks out of their way. You talked about politics, taking politics out of the way, enabling them to do what they do best and making them feel owners of the business rather than just an employee who'd come from eight to five and do uh, what somebody's watching them over to do is a culture that you need to bring. And I think uh, to build that culture, having a good sense of the details like sitting in headquarters you know how the battle is uh, fought on the field is very important so that's how I can open it a lot of uh, young smart people come and tell me how should I plan my journey and sometimes I say just do the right things and the journey will play out uh, very well for you sometimes planning too much can actually confuse you and uh, uh, make you too anxious and you make mistakes when you're very anxious wow <laughs> I just connected to every everything you said Absolutely. Very, very well said. So again, Wipro, $40 billion, April 20th, 2020, world shuts down. Nobody knew we cannot go to the office anymore. We have paid billions and millions everywhere in different parts of the world. Come to the office, do your job. No more. How did you deal with that? Wow, that was one of the most humbling leadership experiences that I have had uh, throughout my career. Uh, I still remember the date uh, when uh, India locked down because uh, the center of gravity, you know, over 120,000 employees Wipro had in India uh, was about March 17th, uh, 2020. March, okay. Yes, and, uh, absolutely. And uh, uh, we had to keep everything up and running for our customers. And, uh, you know, people were supposed to work from home. There were, you know, in the IT industry in general, you know, cyber security, uh, access to systems from home, just having the basic bandwidth available. Some of the things that you would take as granted over here, you know, a lot of employees in the US would have uh, giga, uh, uh, gig bandwidth available at home. In India, we give dongles to people. But the most humbling experience was every employee, while everybody was very anxious, there was fear, there was confusion, the environment around them was of uncertainty. But everybody was thinking about the customer first. How can I keep the customer up and running? And I think that was very humbling. And that that uh, passion for the customer to keep things up and running was the driver where people, some of the people actually picked up their desktops, got into a taxi and took the desktop home on the last day because the lag lockdown, especially in India, was a very drastic lockdown. Like midnight. Like a curfew. Midnight, like yeah. a curfew, right? And so people went out of the way. If they would have waited for the company to send computing equipment and uh, networking equipment to their homes, that would have never happened. So every employee stood up to be able to do it. And you know, while I'm talking about Wipro, this happened for the entire in Indian IT industry. Uh, and that is, again, kudos to, to the customer centricity that we have, the Jugaad mentality, you know, make things happen. And the passion to prove ourselves that we can... Uh, do very well, we are very resilient, we can achieve the end objectives. I think all of that came together. Technologists always have ways, you know, engineers find a way, they are problem solvers. So they found a way. But it was a great experience. Within about four days, almost 97% employees were able to work from home. And then obviously over time, we took care of uh, uh, their ability to work, their, you know, some people were given uh, hotel rooms uh, uh, all over the world. The customers were very, very uh, accommodative of how to keep things running by making some exceptions in data privacy, cyber security, network access, entitlement kind of activities. So, you know, it was a great experience and uh, a lot to learn from it. Wow, what what a story. And I love the word Jugaad, by the <laughs> way. That's why I'm here talking to you. So, so one more thing that stands out is, you know, anybody you talk to these days, they are very busy. Everybody's busy. I'm very busy, right? Everybody you talk to are very busy. I'll call you back. I'm, you know, somebody, whatever they're doing, they're busy. $40 billion company. How did you keep work-life balance? How? Well, this is my favorite topic. And uh, I'll, you know, if you're too busy, then you're not doing your work well. 
because you are busy because you're doing somebody else's work. Otherwise, corporate structures or business structures are always uh, designed in a manner that you should have a lot of think time, a lot of family time in your hand. And uh, the two or three reasons that I have seen why people stay busy, number one, they stay busy because they do somebody else's work. They don't delegate enough. And especially it's very important for leaders to delegate. Do you have people in your team who are all waiting for your orders all the time? Or are they self-driven? Are they better than you? Hiring people better than you and having them on the team is a very difficult thing for a leader because they are the people who will push you back. They are the people who will challenge you. They are the people who are not going to be order takers and yes men and yes women. So you have to have that. Second is, I always think about time as a resource that you have that you allocate to various things. And I just believe that like a customer is important and if a customer asks for a meeting you always give, your family is equally important. So if it is your daughter's birthday, it goes in my calendar. And if it goes in my calendar like a board meeting or like a customer meeting, uh, I'm always available to attend my daughter's birthday because I know years in advance every year when my daughter's birthday is going to be there. So some of those things help you uh, create much more life balance because you can always get busy and say, oh, I've got such an important meeting, I can't attend your birthday, dear. And you know, family understands. But a lot of times we take some part of our stakeholders as granted, whereas we would not do the same thing with other parts of the stakeholders. And I would just say, like, treat everybody like you treat your customer or your boss or whoever is the stakeholder you prioritize the highest. Just equally prioritize society, pro you know, community service becomes important. Uh, your personal life and family becomes important. Of course, your work becomes important. Things you are passionate about and just thinking time. How do you strategize? How do you think? So to me, work life, when you talk about a balance, that word itself is a problem because you balance when there are two disjointed things. Like tarazu mein aap tolta hai na? This is a continuum. And in today's technology world, in virtual world, you're working for a few minutes and then you're living for a few minutes and then you're working again. And if you're in a job, which you are passionate about, then that is your life. Wow. Very, very well done. So, where are there leaders or were there leaders that inspired you? Oh, there are many, many leaders uh, who inspired me. And in different, uh, I, I kind of uh, learn all the time, you know, because the day you stop learning, the, that day you stop living. So, there are leaders like, uh, you know, Mahatma Gandhi or Martin Luther King and others from a political perspective, you know, how do you communicate? Just imagine a country at that time of uh, three, four hundred million people or now a billion people to be able to stand up against the strongest power of the world. Mahatma Gandhi was able to do it or Martin Luther King over here was able to do it. And that is the ability to have people respect your vision, understand your vision and follow you as a leader. And that's a big inspiration. Of course, um, you know, how do you have a very holistic life? Uh, you know, I am a Bori and our... Uh, religious leader Sayyidna Mufad al Saifuddin and Muhammad Buranuddin before that is an inspirational leader to how do you have a very holistic life where there's meditation, where there's faith, where there is, you know, you, uh, loyalty to the country that you live in, all of that comes together. That's an inspiration for me. Of course, I've had the privilege of working with some very legendary leaders in the technology industry, people like Fakir Kohli, as I said, unfortunately, he passed away earlier this year. Uh, he's the father of Indian IT industry. I had ability to work closely with him. Wow. The two other CEOs of TCS, uh, Ramadurai and Chandrasekhar and Chandra, who's now the chairman of Tata Sons, I had the opportunity of being mentored with him and he's been a very inspirational leader. Working with Azim Premji for the last five years, what a leader. It's not only about serial entrepreneurship and building businesses, but how do you give back to the community?